Good afternoon, Andy and Amanda. How are you this afternoon? Yeah, yeah, I'm good, Amanda. I'm very tired because someone decided to ring our doorbell at 11 o'clock last night and I didn't really sleep much after that. <laughs> no, honestly, like it was, I kid you not, people, like it's uh, Amanda normally tends to go to bed pretty early, you normally, know, like nine o'clock normally, don't you? Yeah, so. but I've been up and down going to the loo and then I think I just got to sleep, the doorbell rang. Yeah, and that, was, that was it for the night. Yeah, that was 11 o'clock and I was just about to head off to bed. And I've, after that, and I thought, so well, you get some midgets flying around. I thought, I'll stop up for a bit in case we get in more trouble. But nope, thankfully not. So, no, well, pardon that, Amanda. What have you been up to them? I've been really busy because I've started doing some voluntary work for a podcast, proofreading some transcripts. It's a paranormal podcast. That's, That's nice. Yeah. Now, um, I don't, be honest clean, I don't know a lot about this. So I want to know more about, more, 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 more about this with you, Amanda. So. I was on this podcast last year and then it led to me going on a bigger podcast because someone recommended me to it. And they emailed me, well, they emailed everyone. It was a newsletter. And they said, like, looking for volunteers. And I thought, oh, I can do a couple of hours a week to do some proofreading. And you get, like, an advert for one of your books on their site and you get a reference if you ever need it. And it's a good experience on my CV. Uh, Amanda, how do I tell Clean how long this transcript was you've got to edit? Uh, well, not that on the other it, side of me. It's 22 pages, so basically I've had to be, I have to keep listening to the actual episode because they're talking about Kabbalah, I think that's how you pronounce it, which is basically like masonry and the occult and stuff like that. And there's all, even though I've got an interest in the paranormal, it's not something that I really have a lot of knowledge on, so I've got to make sure, you know, all the spellings are right and things like that. So there's a lot of Googling. <laughs> so, do you want to my news for the week, Colleen, as well? Yeah. Yeah, I was on in the BBC, BBC Radio Man Show on Saturday night, I wasn't, I was on myself. Yeah, and he's a radio star. No, I've not been been a radio star, but, oh, but that was an nice. <laughs> interesting experience. Because, you know, if not, I enjoyed it. I generally did enjoy it. But what they did, Colleen, was... When, they, when they've been doing this to people in the past, they've been ringing them up, basically, on the telephone and doing the interview over the telephone. They rang me up, dead on seven o'clock, and I said, oh, can we do this on Zoom tonight? And I, I don't mind using Zoom, but I was glad I had my laptop on. So why, you can imagine it clean, can't you? Spending five or ten minutes booting Zoom up to try and get, <laughs> get it working. It'd been chaos, but oh. And then what they also had on their clean, this probe question, they've never done this before, I'm aware of. They had two extra, they effectively had three hosts on, not not one. So like they were the, the three hosts were all chatting away. And I'm yeah, sat there so thinking. They're asking them weird. questions as well, wasn't they? And it's like normally it's just been like you get like eight or nine minutes and that's your time and they ask you questions. So it cut into Andy's time that did. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's unorthodox. Um the one thing they did do clean, it was really good hand. I, I, and they did the same for Amanda last, last year, was it? Yeah. Yeah, they did the same for Amanda last year. What they did was, um, I, I, I sent in the link clean, you can listen to it, and they're people welcome to listen to it, well worth a listen. What they did, on the poem in mind in question, which is about two and a half minutes long, it's a longer poem, they put some quite dramatic music on the bottom of it, like a little classical stuff, man, didn't they, to get a very old feeling? Yeah, it made a bit of nostalgic feel. That's why, because the piece is about um, an old theatre in Stratford near where I grew up, and... That was, and that covers a lot of like 30s, 40s, and 50s history. So it's a real historical piece, but I think you'd probably, you'd probably enjoy it. So I'll send it over to you. And yeah, yeah far from that, Colleen, I've got our news next week, but that's my news this week. So what have you been up to this week then? Yeah, quite a lot. So I'm going to be doing my recordings for my radio show today or tomorrow, but anyway, it's going to be soon because we're still not able to go into the studio yet. Well, I'm not. Anyway. I was going to ask you about that, Colleen. So what's the state? Obviously, like Amanda's friend, um, Ruth, you know, I'm sure, man. Yeah, she works, she's, I know she's doing all hers on a tele telephone still. Yeah, she? she's, she's never liked having a laptop, so she records it all on the phone and sends it in that way, and then they edit it and broadcast it in the studio. So, what are you, how are you recording yours at the moment, then, Colleen? Your radio program, do we not have the studio? Because we're bigger, probably bigger than. Amanda's friend's radio station. We have to do it ourselves. So we do our own editing and we do our own recording. So then we, we record it on whatever recording equipment that we have and then we send it through to them. 
by email or any other kind of, you know, any other kind of way to, to, to get it to the studio. And we're moving, <clears throat> sorry, it's just that I had to rest and I had to make sure that I got up before we did our podcast. But we're moving to a new studio and it's really big. It's like massive. It's got like three or four studios and then okay. like a common area. It's just brilliant. It's yeah, yeah. It's really reminds nice. a lot then. Sound like as um, Amanda and May last, or Amanda last year, you went on Salford City FM, man, didn't you? Yeah, and they've got what studios, they've got at least three, I think it's four studio studios that yeah. I could see, and quite a hefty reception area as well. So it sounds like that it's it sounds like you moved to a much bigger studio. And so, well, how many studios is it? Is is in the current studio, Kalina? Ah, clever. So that's two. Remember, I was saying last time there were two studios. Ah, that, One that, sorry, I'd forgotten. Um, no, no, say, no, deep, no, deep no, brains. <laughs> no, that was a long time ago, though, but. I was just thinking that, oh, maybe you might remember, but there's a, a newsroom studio and then there's the presenter's studio. And it's really nice. You just, when you go in, you feel like you're in another world. It's like being in an actual studio itself. I've been to Capital Radio Studios and it's, do you remember when they I've did? Been past, I've been past Capital, actually. That's a big studio. That is a big place, yeah. That was in Houston, though. Now they've moved somewhere else. Oh, well, they moved down there. Well, I haven't passed the Houston one. I didn't know they moved. That was a few years ago, mind you. They moved. They moved a long time ago. But do you remember Help a London Child? That's where I did it. I did Help a London Child with Capital Radio. Yeah, 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 yeah. I do, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go on. Yeah, I did that with them. So I'd go to the studios, and it's massive. It's like at Houston. That is, you go up to like the first floor. I think Chris Tarrant went by. When, when oh, wow. I was going there, yeah. My God, God, he brings, that name brings some memories back. It does, God. God. Um, if you remember Pat Cash and Mick, Mick Smith, I got Mick Brown. He's now. Yeah, with, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do remember both of them too. Cool, cool. Yeah, he's now with another radio station. Not as famous. Probably, it actually is, but not as. Yeah, well no, cool. No, yeah. cool. 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 Um, um, it's like that. It's like that. It's like the Capital Radio Studios, but smaller. So when you go in, you have your own keyboard. And you have to know how to use it. Because like I was saying that I did hospital radio and I we go around the ward and host you'd interview the children, then you go back to the studio. It's like that. And same thing actually, same thing. Oh, cool. And then, yeah, That's it's cool. really nice. Oh, so it's cool. going to be bigger though, massive. I've seen the the Zoom tour, and it's really nice, really nice. Yeah. Oh, cool, cool. That was good to make a line. And I said that one time. Um, oh, what else have I got to tell you? All day is really fun. Missed off. No, no, I'm terribly <laughs> lost. Yeah, don't you show you show you that with. I know all the days are still going into one at the minute. It's like um, I know up here, clean and the different now on the political side of the spectrum. I know a lot of the children start going back to school today up here, but I've not seen anything. We've not really been out today. So I don't... The lollipop person, the person who has done the lollipop for many years, I've seen him at the zebra crossing, but he was busy talking to his friends, probably really happy to get back to work, I, I assume. Yeah, yeah. No, it's understandable. You didn't really have that sort of job. He probably, probably hadn't really been working for much over the past year, really, because... Yeah, I know, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, st I'm still shielding at the moment, really. I'm shielding until the 1st of April now, don't you? So, so I'm working, mm -hmm. I'm off this week, but usually I'm working home for a couple of weeks still, so it's like... So a couple of years ago, I mentioned the Poppadom Cafe family, so that's, that's going forward because now that I'm part of a, a library group, then I can take that forward and build it up because we were I was saying that you know you could come along and read your poetry at the literary Poppadom Cafe family so that's going forward my football team is going to be London wide so they know and I don't know how we're going to take it forward but we're going to take it forward anyway and the well-being group that's on Tuesdays but it's all intertwined so like the cafe family the literary cafe family would know about the well-being group so it's all the same thing, but I'm taking it forward to more 
intertwining. So it's a literary plus the well-being plus the other the other group. I'm not sure how we're going to take the football forward because coaching it, it takes children or young people to come forward, and we I don't know any children or young people, so that's why it's taking so long. And I think a lot of this, like you know, when we went back to 2007 and 8, it has taken a long time, but we've both been doing our different work at the same time and just yeah, forward. But, the, good po the good point tonight, yeah. Pauline, actually, where I want to bring a good part as well, because somebody we know, and this applies to you as well, actually, in a different way, a friend of ours was turned around and told me fairly recently, it's about me and Amanda, he said there was two, what he likes about the fact is, like, as art or artists, you know, creative people, We've never stood still. We constantly move, constantly moving on to new projects all the time. And that applies to you, Clint. Like you've not, you've not just stood still with one thing. It's constantly mm -hmm. evolving, and you're moving like we've all, we've all got some, Yeah, that's the reason is we've all got something in common. We all started when we were very young. I started when I was about seven, when I was reading poetry in the open fields at boarding school yeah. back in Jamaica. First, we, first we, poem I wrote, I was ten. We, now, when did you what was the first thing you were on the really? I remember? just remember like trying to read about like, fairy tales when I was about three or four. I can't <laughs> promise that we're any good, <laughs> but I tried. So, <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that Mandra actually. That's a good story. I'll have to know what I did more of that. <laughs> yeah. That's honestly clean. That was she surprised Mandra surprising me today. She's coming out of things I didn't know about. That's always good fun, that. But you're right, I think it's I've s I know people have started. On the creativity, and this is people not just Manchester, all over the place, that have started much later in life. And the, the way they're disciplined as a writer is very different, usually, to what it is yeah. to start as a child, I think. What do you think, Amanda? Yeah, I've never kept any of my older stuff, but I think I'd be embarrassed if I look back at it now. <laughs> well, it's, it's nice to see the changes and the yeah. development. But I think what three of us have noticed over the years is that we haven't grown up, but we have, if you know what I mean. Oh, like, we've grown up, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, haven't we? Have because it's like, of us too, Colleen. I'm daft as a brush, I'm sure. It's like, if you ever see me writing, writing is it's probably one of the two or three things I'm serious about, Amanda, isn't it? Yeah, and there's certain not, there's not much else I'm serious about. I'll, I'll, I, I'm known when I was in work. In the office, in the office, week for last, and I got, I got, when I got sent home with a shielding letter. The two young girls on and just met at work in my team and they both said to me, I spent a lot quieter about you about you Andrew the next month. And I said I said quiet and shy. And one of them one of them used one of them used a BS word to that yeah, laughing that, grass. That's what I would have said so. <laughs> <laughs> I said, but it's like I said, it's just it's what you I think sometimes when you're younger, I you think you're very self-conscious and I was when I was very quiet when I was younger. I think you were as well, weren't you? Yeah, I still am yeah. Quite, yeah. a lot quieter than you, I know. But I clean, what were you like younger? Were you a lot quieter when you were younger growing up? Yeah, I was quite because I was taking things in. As I said, like because we, we naturally went into writing and creativity when we were young, like I was seven, hmm. I was taking things in and notifying. Like I noticed like the fern gully and I'd be like looking at it for description mm -hmm. for why it's so quiet. And then I wrote about it on my poetry website literary website the other day because I remembered it from childhood but what I think we're doing when we were children is taking things in to regurgitate or to write at a later date whereas like yeah. others were probably not doing that as you say they develop differently and we have different perspective from when you're a child writing to when you're an adult starting to write it's a very different thing because you don't you probably wouldn't have noticed the things when you were younger, like us lot, we, us three, we were saying we wrote, you know, fairy tales, or I remember like reading the Red Green Book, the Red Fairy Green Book at secondary school here in, in London, and the Green Fairy Book and the Red Fairy Book, and I was thinking, I'd like to write, start writing like that, because I felt writing is difficult, and I used to like writing poetry for that reason, because you could go into one different subject each time rather than stick to a novel kind of theme yeah 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 no, great no, great it's a good point a good point clean that one indeed clean it's 14.55 we better get going to everybody see you Ciao, next guys. week